Now that I've recorded this episode, I'd like to tell you what to expect. There are three parts to this. In part one, you'll hear about potty training. You'll hear a joke and learn some fun things. In part two, you'll learn about peeing and pooping vocabulary, which is very taboo to talk about, yet it's useful for a multitude of reasons, which I'll mention. In part three, you'll hear two crazy stories about people, no names, who literally pooped on the party. I hope you'll find them funny and they'll help you recall some crazy stories you've heard. Just wanted to let you know what to expect. Hope you enjoy this. I think I'm going to go hide now. (laughs) Hi, everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories. I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Welcome back. Did you click on this episode hoping to hear about parties and pooping? Well, you're in luck. Today, we're going to be chatting casually about these important life topics. If you're not interested in these two things, then I highly recommend hopping over to one of the more structured lessons. I want to stress how casual this one is going to be, and there's a reason for it. A long time ago, I mentioned that the reason I got into language learning with podcasts was because of Annick Rubens, a German woman who I listened to daily while studying abroad in Berlin, Germany. That was back in 2009, uh, which is just wild. But uh, while I was on the subway in Berlin, or the U-Bahn, I repeated what Annick said in my head, trying to imitate her perfect German accent. She spoke clearly and confidently. And I thought, geez, I want to speak just like her. One of the things I liked about her podcast, which was called Schlaflos in München, uh, which unfortunately is not available anymore, was that she spoke without much preparation. It's as if she turned on the microphone and spoke from the heart, which is great. As a language learner, I heard common, natural transitions from one idea to the next in addition to hearing about life in Munich. She also spoke about mundane things. Mundane is an adjective that means ordinary or commonplace. Mundane tasks include things like loading the dishwasher, ironing a blouse that has wrinkles in it because you have an event in the evening, or maybe even like running errands, like cashing a check at the bank. Those are mundane tasks. And for a native speaker, hearing about these things is sort of dreadful. It's not very fun. But as a language learner, it's useful. We all do mundane tasks, and it is nice to know how to talk about them so that you can come up with more detailed answers when people ask you, hey, what did you do today? Right? You could simply answer, I woke up. But come on, add some details. So for this reason, I created the Chats with Shauna episodes. You'll hear many mundane activities. And also, I'll ramble about our life in the context of Los Angeles, California. My hope is that you'll feel exactly how I used to feel with Anik. I hope you mimic my voice. Not because it's perfect, but because it's good for your pronunciation. I'll also explain challenging words and phrases as I go along. Once again, today's topic is parties and poopers. Let's start with a joke. If you're Canadian when you go into a bathroom and Canadian when you come out of the bathroom, 
What are you when you're in the bathroom? Any ideas? European. (laughs) Get it? European? (laughs) If you say European, it sounds like you're saying you are peeing in a very slangy way. European. So let's hear the joke one more time. If you're Canadian when you walk into a bathroom and Canadian when you come out of the bathroom, what are you when you're in the bathroom? European. (laughs) Speaking of pee, do you remember peeing or pooping in your pants as a child? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. And what's weird is that every single one of us used to wear diapers. And at one point, our parents said, you know, this is enough. I'm not changing another diaper. And then you were forced to wear underwear. I've always liked how in foreign languages, there are funny words to describe underwear. My Mexican roommate, when I lived in Santa Barbara, used to call them chonies. My German friend used to jokingly call them her schlipfe, (laughs) which I think is equivalent to granny panties. In English, we have funny words too. My brother wears undies, which is short for underwear. And as a female, I can put on undies or panties. Panties is used almost exclusively to talk about female underwear. Two weeks ago, I had a moment with my daughter, Clara, who is two years old, and realized it was time to start potty training. A potty is what children call the toilet. From my research, potty comes from the word chamber pot, which is an object that people used back in the day to do their business. It was what they used to go pee or to go poop. And this was before modern plumbing, when you couldn't flush, there were no pipes. So this thing was like a portable toilet or bowl, which is sort of gross, right? If it filled up, it needed to be emptied. So a potty comes from the word chamber pot, and I decided I wanted to potty train Clara. I wanted to teach her how to use the potty or to go potty. You'll hear young kids say this all the time. Can I go to the potty? Or can I go potty? Adults even use it. Not with each other, but with kids. Hey, Johnny, do you need to go potty? We'll be in the car for a while. So there we were at the start of the new year with an obstacle. How do you teach a two-year-old to use a potty? Potty training is Not something you think about every day, unless you have a toddler or a pet, right? In the case of a cat, you might need a litter box if you want them to go pee in the house. You might need some kitty litter, which feels like thick sand. Uh, You might need a scooper to scoop up whatever mess they make inside. And those treats, right? Treats serve as positive reinforcement with animals and with humans. Now, typically in the U.S., toddlers learn to potty train between two and four years old. But most do it around two and a half. There is a rumor that is widely spread in the U.S., and that's that in Vietnam, kids are potty trained as early as nine months. Well, I guess they're babies, technically, because I know there are listeners from Vietnam on here. I need to ask, is that true? Do mothers train babies to pee in a potty by nine months using a whistling technique? Please write to me at American English Podcast on Instagram and tell me if this rumor is true. I have a really hard time believing it, but I will believe you if you tell me. So how does any person or animal learn to urinate or defecate in the right spot? I attempted to find an answer to this how to train a child to use the potty, 
by getting a book on Amazon called Potty Training in Three Days by Brandy Brooks. And its method was fairly simple. You have a ceremony to get rid of all of the diapers. You put on a pair of undies. Well, you not personally, but you put them on your child. You introduce the toilet. And then you reward your toddler with their favorite treat every time they successfully go potty. The downside of this method is that for three days straight, as a parent, you need to stay right next to your kid without a single distraction. You can't watch TV or go out of the house. You can't take your eyes off them. When they have an accident, which will likely happen, you have to run mid-flow to the toilet. It's messy. But apparently, it's in that movement, moving them mid-flow, that teaches them that the toilet is where they need to go, not in their pants, not in their diaper. Then, of course, the toddler gets their reward, right? Positive reinforcement. The woman who wrote this book, Potty Trains Children for a Living, it's her job. She potty trains children that are not her own, which is kind of funny. But I get it. I get how stressful it can be to train a child, um, especially if your kid is old enough to change his or her own diaper, right? It's like convincing and talking to them. And gosh, there's just so much in the process. But what's fascinating to me is that she discovered a correlation between a child's personality and how fast they'll pick up the new habit. To pick up is a phrasal verb, and it means to manage to learn something. For example, if you've never thrown an American football before, but you manage to make it spin correctly after 10 minutes, someone might say, wow you picked that up fast. Or, wow, you caught on fast. Stubborn kids or independent kids are apparently easier to teach. It's the quiet, easygoing ones that don't really get annoyed that can take a little longer to pick up the habit or to catch on to the new habit. At the end of the training, though, she said that 98.5% catch on. That's a good success rate. So for three days, I did exactly what this woman said. I reinforced that my daughter was a big girl, just like her sister and cousins. I referred to a diaper as yucky and gross when it was wet, making really dramatic faces to show my disgust. And she eventually started copying me. I'm happy to say that after three days, My daughter is potty trained, which is pretty exciting. It's a bit of a struggle for those three days to deal with this, but obviously it's a lifetime skill. Imagine if, as an adult, we still wet our pants. For anyone who's in the same boat and needs to potty train their child, check out the episode notes. I'll post a link to this free ebook in the description. Once again, this book is intended for toddlers. Toddlers are children between the ages of two and four. So if you have a strange uncle that can't control his bladder or bowels, uh, maybe he's got to see a urologist, which is a doctor that deals with urination and bladder issues, or maybe a gastroenterologist, someone who deals with the intestines. Once again, we also call these bowels. Before we move on to the party topic, I'm going to share some very um, funny words about poop, which, you know, this is taboo to talk about. And if you were in the same room as me, there's no way that I could actually say these words and phrases in front of you because I would either start laughing or want to cover my face in embarrassment. So I'm glad I'm recording this because some of these things are useful, some of them are funny, some of them you do want to say and don't want to say, and let's just talk about this. 
In English, we don't make or do pee. We go pee. Go pee. If you drink a lot of water, you'll have to go pee. If you get food poisoning, you'll have to go poop. Little kids might call pee, pee pee. And they call poop, poo poo or doo doo. It's funny because in Brazil, there's a lot of men nicknamed doo doo, which is really laughable. But I guess I shouldn't be the one to talk because my name also means something really unfortunate in Portuguese. Anyway, doo doo is funny. <laughs> a doctor in a very formal setting would have other words to use to describe peeing and pooping. Peeing would be called urinating and pooping defecating. Or they'd call it a bowel movement. How are your bowel movements, sir? How are your stools? Stools is a doctor's way to refer to your poop. Normal humans have euphemisms for all of this stuff because it's a little weird to talk about openly. Pee is referred to as number one, and poop is referred to as number two. You might hear people say, and this is extremely common, are you going number one? In other words, are you going to pee? Or are you going number two? Are you going poop? Some people go a little bit farther with the euphemisms. You might hear, uh, I need to catch up on some reading. That means I need to go number two. <laughs> um, oh, God. <laughs> this actually would come out of my brother's mouth. I need to drop the kids off at the pool, which means I need to go number two. Someone might say they need to take the Browns to the Super Bowl. The Browns is a football team, and the toilet is often referred to as a toilet bowl. So the Super Bowl, get it? Take the Browns to the Super Bowl. Anyway, that means number two. There are some other very disgusting words, the least classy of all. And here are some example sentences with them. That bathroom reeks. Someone definitely took a dump in there. To take a dump means to go number two. Or who dropped a deuce without flushing? To drop a deuce, once again, is to go number two. Now, careful with these last two. To take a dump and to drop a deuce are extremely disgusting and very slangy. If you used them when talking to a doctor, I guarantee they'd either laugh and maybe leave the room because they couldn't control themselves, or maybe they'd correct you with the proper terminology. I guess it just depends on the doctor's personality. In English, we call someone a party pooper if they refuse to join the fun of a party. If everyone at a party is dancing on the table and you're sitting in the corner by yourself, someone might tell you, come here, you party pooper. Get in the party mood. Don't be a party pooper. Originally, I was going to tell the story about Julia's fourth birthday party, but in fact, there were no party poopers at the party. We had a bounce house. The adults got inside. We jumped with all the kids. Julia got her very colorful cupcakes she wanted. She got to open presents. People sang to her. Overall, it was a great party. There are a few other parties, though, where people literally pooped at the party. And I'm going to share those stories with you, removing the names so that these people aren't embarrassed and I'm not throwing them under the bus. They're just funny and I got to share them. So the first one is about a friend of mine. This friend of mine is one of six children. He's got a huge family. And when he was a kid, he had a sweet tooth. Someone who has a sweet tooth loves sweet things. So cookies and cakes, pies, really anything. One day, this friend of mine, before a big family trip, decided to look for some sweets at home. And he knew that his mom hid a little stash of sweets 
on top of the refrigerator. So he got a chair, he climbed up, and he looked inside her little stash. His mom thought she was being secret about it. He found it, and he felt like a million bucks. He felt great about himself. So he grabbed the bars and ate them. And it wasn't until after he ate them that he realized they were x lax bars. x lax is a medication that helps relieve constipation. So if you're stopped up inside, if your intestines are blocked, if you are constipated, it helps get rid of that. So oftentimes you'll get diarrhea if you eat too much x lax So this friend of mine didn't know that he had eaten a full chocolate bar of x lax and it immediately became apparent. So he had to run to the bathroom and he had the runs. The runs uh, is another way to say diarrhea. He had the runs. That bar of x lax gave him the runs. And it was a problem because his family was about to leave on a trip. His dad, who was outside waiting in the car with the family, was wondering, hey, what's the holdup? What's holding us up? In other words, why are we not leaving? What are we waiting for? What is happening? And so he ran inside, and this friend of mine was, you know, having his issues. <laughs> and this, his dad ended up grabbing him by the back, the back of his shirt, and pretty much dragged him to the car. Now, when he got to the garage and actually wanted him to get into the car, he sort of threw him in, not intentionally trying to hurt him, but this individual hit his head, so he started bleeding, and then he pooped his pants. When this individual tells this story, he can't help but laugh. And he laughs hysterically, <laughs> sort of out of control. He's like, I was covered in blood and poo. It was really dramatic. And for my whole life, my brothers and sisters have made fun of me about it. The only reason I'm laughing about it is because he finds it so funny. In any other situation, I would think, oh, gosh, this is so traumatic. I'm so sorry you had to go through this. But I think he's glad it happened just because it's a story to tell. And the moral of this story is, number one, don't steal from your parents' stash. A stash is a collection of things that you don't want people to find. So some people might have a stash of drugs or of candy. Uh, my parents had a stash of M&Ms that I knew of when I was a kid. And yeah, uh, number two, learn to read. If this person had known how to read the packaging on the x lax this wouldn't have happened, right? And this is a great use of the third conditional. Right. So if he had been able to read the package, he wouldn't have eaten the chocolate. He wouldn't have gotten the runs. He wouldn't have hit his head in the car. And his day certainly would have been better. Anyway, he literally pooped at the party. <laughs> the second story I'm going to share happened in Brazil. When Lucas and I were in Brazil a few years ago, we went to a family party and his cousin told me that his daughter was learning English at her school. She was young, honestly three years old. So I started talking very slowly in English and she actually got so nervous and scared that she pooped her pants. At first I thought, whoa, that has never happened before. And then I felt really bad. I had to talk to her to make sure I didn't traumatize her with my simple English questions, which is nuts because the moment I started speaking in Portuguese, she was comfortable again. 
Isn't it wild how people can get so frightened by speaking a foreign language that it can physically affect their body? She was literally a party pooper. The moral of this story is number one, know your body. If you think you're going to be affected by something, you know, nervousness, and if it's going to affect your bowels, be prepared. Of course, we can't expect that from a three-year-old, so it is what it is. Number two, regularly put yourself in situations where you feel uncomfortable. If you feel uncomfortable, you're probably in an environment where you're going to learn something. And at least in my eyes, that's a stepping stone to something better. Maybe it's a stepping stone to feeling more comfortable. I hope these stories got you thinking about embarrassing stories like these that you've heard of. Now knowing so many different terms in English for peeing and pooping, do you feel like you could describe those stories you've heard in English? Try. That's the end of this episode. Hope you found it funny or entertaining. Let me know on Instagram at American English Podcast. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.